this is not the world. This is not the world that we experience, okay? How, Mr. Everett, are you going to map this very beautiful theory onto <coughs> reality? The answer is, I left something out. Maybe you were clever enough to catch, but I cheated a little bit. I just told you, there's not a separate wave function for every bit of the universe. There's only one wave function for everything at once. And yet, I wrote this wave function as if the only thing that exists is a cat and you have it. I really should technically include the entire rest of the universe in my wave function. Do not be alarmed. Uh, it's easy to do. We invent a word for the rest of the universe. We call it the environment. Here's a picture of the environment. Okay? It doesn't matter. So the environment with a specific state doesn't really matter. What matters is the environment is going to interact according to the Schrodinger equation with the cat and with the observer. So the environment, for example, in this room, it's everything I don't keep track of. It includes all the atoms in the air, it includes all the photons of light coming from the light. Oh look, there's a whole balcony in there, hi. <laughs> you're a great audience, yes. Um, you're not part of the environment, I do care about you. <laughs> but in the box, there's the environment, as well as outside the box. So what happens is, long before you open the box, the environment, the photons and the atoms inside the box, interact with the cat. You know, you imagine if the cat is walking around and awake, a certain photon might be absorbed by the cat. Whereas if the cat were lying down and asleep, the same photon might go right on by. So this is a phenomenon called decoherence. That cat does not maintain its separate identity just by being in two different places, depending on if it's awake or asleep, but instantly becomes entangled with the environment. So we have a situation where before I open the box, there's a cat that's awake and the environment has measured the cat to be awake. Or the cat is asleep and the environment has measured the cat to be asleep. And then I open the box, and that's what I call measurement, but the action has really already happened. I then become entangled with the cat and the environment. And now this is just slightly different than what I showed you before. It's still a situation where there's part of the wave function where the cat's awake, and part of it where the cat's asleep. But again, I don't keep track of the environment. I don't really know what's going on in it, but what I know from this kind of analysis is it's completely different in the world where the cat's awake and the world where the cat's asleep. So different that what's going on in the part of the wave function where the cat's awake is now completely independent of what's going on in the part of the wave function where the cat's asleep. If I change, if I perturb or tweak one part of the wave function, it doesn't affect the other part anymore. So what's happening, in other words, is that decoherence, the entanglement of the cat with the environment, has branched the wave function to two different pieces, which evolve independently from then on for the rest of the history of the universe. They do not affect each other. They do not care that each other exists. It is as if they have become two separate worlds. That's why the effort interpretation of quantum mechanics was later dubbed the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. It predicts, just like the phone, that every time I measure a quantum system by entangling it with the wider world, two copies of the world, or many more copies of the world, are created, each of which a different measurement outcome was obtained. What I want to emphasize is, Everett didn't take an infinite number of worlds and add them to quantum mechanics. Everett just accepted that the worlds were always there. If an electron can be in a superposition of spin up and spin down, and you trust quantum mechanics, then you can be in a superposition of having seen the electron spin up and having seen the electron spin down. And if you trust that, then the universe can be in a superposition of one or the other. And the math says those different parts of the superposition go their own way. They're independent. They don't interact anymore. 